sensory organ. In this module, we are going to discuss on the topic what is a sensory organ and the different types of the sensory organs, their positioning and the function. So let's get started. What is a sensory organ? An organ of the body which responds to the external stimuli by conveying the impulses to the sensory nervous system. The sensory nervous system is a part of the nervous system which is responsible for processing the sensory information. The body has millions of the sense organs in the form of the sense neurons which are the receptors for the general sensation. These receptors are almost evenly distributed throughout the body. In man and other higher animals, there are five types of special sense to respond to the sense of the environment. The types of the sensory organs. There are signs of sight, hearing, touch, taste and smell. The five types of the sensory organs are such as the first one is the sense organ of the sight which is also called as photoreceptor. Second, the sense organ of hearing come equilibrium which is also termed as phonoreceptor come statoreceptor. The third is the sense organ of touch or tactile organ. The fourth is the sense organ of the taste which is also called as gustatoreceptor. And the last is the sense organ of the smell which is also called as olfactory organ. So let's discuss these five types of the sensory organs one by one in detail. The first is the sense organ of the sight, which is also called as photoreceptor. The sense organ of the sights are a pair of the eyes. Each eye is a spherical ball-like structure which measures about 2.5 cm in diameter and is termed as an eyeball. The eyeballs are attached in the eye orbit of the skull and can rotate with the help of six muscles. Two of these muscles are oblique and four are rectus muscles. For the protection of the eyes, as we all know, the eyes are very delicate structures. So, they are protected by various accessory structures, which are, the first is the adipose tissue. Below the eyeball is present a cushion of adipose tissue, which protects the eyeball from any kind of mechanical injury or shock. The second is the eyelids. The upper and the lower eyelids are movable and they are protected eyes from any kind of the injury. They also clean the structure of the eyeball by regular blinking and they spread the lubricating secretions over the eyeball for proper functioning. They also work as shutters during the night and bring bright lights as shown in the picture also. The next is the eyelashes. They are very small but thick hair present on the free margins of the eyelids in a row which acts as a strainers. They doesn't allow the dust and the other foreign particles to enter the eye. The special oil glands are present here which secretes the lubricating liquid and infections of these glands is called style. The next is the eyebrows. Eyebrows are the arced emniatures of the skin above the eyes and they protect the eye from the dust, sweat and the rain for it. The next is the lacrimal glands. They are present on the lateral aspects of the eye. Its size and shape is like an almond present below the eyelids. They secrete the tears which wash away any dust and grit from the eyeballs. These tears, they contain the lysosomes which are the bactericidal and they kill bacteria. The next protective covering is the last one is the nose. Nose is present between the two eyes and it acts like a shield. It prevents the eye from being hit by any flat object. Structure of an eyeball. So let's discuss about the structure of an eyeball in detail. The adult eyeball is a hollow spherical structure. Out of the total surface area, only the front one-sixth it remains exposed. The rest of the eyeball is embedded in a bony socket. Six eye muscles attach the eyeball to the bones. The walls of the eyeball is divided into three concentric layers as shown in the picture also. The first one is the sclerotic layer. It is made up of the tough, non-elastic fibrous tissues and is white in color. 
the sclera bulges out and becomes transparent in the front region to make the cornea, that is, the bulging part of the eye. As cornea drives oxygen by diffusion, therefore, the excess use of the contact lenses is not recommended as it could lead to the drawing of the cornea. This cornea comes sometimes it becomes opaque, that is, white and non functional defective which can be then replaced by a healthy cornea from a donated eye. Cornea remains alive up to nearly 40 hours after the death of a person. A thin membrane called conjunctiva is present on entire anterior front part of the eyes, which when gets infected by the virus, it turns red and develops a very common eye disease called as conjunctivitis. The next is the cord. Choroid, the inner to the sclera, is a deeply pigmented layer of the tissue which is known as, named as choroid, which is richly supplied with the blood vessels for providing the nourishment to the eyes. It is dark black in color and darkened in the inner side of the eyeball. In the front of the eye, the choroid expands to form a ciliary body, which consists of the ciliary processes and muscles. Continuous to the choroid, a color disc of tissue, which is termed as iris, is present, which partially covers the lens and leaves a circular opening in the center named as pupil. The blue or the brown or the black color of the eye, it refers to the color of the iris. The next one is the retina. The innermost light-sensitive layer of the eyeball covering the choroid and the ending at the edges of the ciliary body. The retina, it contains two types of photosensitive cells which are termed as rods and the cones. These rods, they contain rhodopsin pigment and respond to the low sensitivity light. Whereas these cones, they contain idopsin pigment and are specialized for the color vision and sharpness of the vision in the bright light. Common abnormalities of the eye. So let's discuss about the different abnormalities or the defects of the eye which we can see. So let's discuss them one by one. The first one is your myopia, which is also termed as near or short sightedness. This condition in which the near vision is clear while the distant vision is blurred. It occurs due to mainly of two reasons. The first, the lens it becomes too convex or curved. And the second reason is the eyeball lengthened from the front to the back. This defect can be corrected by wearing a concave lens. Here, the power of the glasses which is used is mentioned in the minus pattern. The second defect is hypermetropia, which is also termed as far or long-sightedness. This condition is in which here the distant vision of the it is clear while the near vision is blurred. And it occurs due to two reasons. One, the lens it becomes less concave, convex or too flattened. And second is the eyeball are shortened from front to the back. And this defect can be corrected by wearing a convex lens. Here, the power of, of the glasses which are used in the lens, as a lens there, it is mentioned in the plus. The third defect is astigmatism. A complicated condition in which the curvature of the cornea is irregular. It is corrected by using a cylindrical lenses. The fourth disease is presbyopia. It is due to the loss of the flexibility of the lenses generally after the age of 40. It creates a difficulty in focusing on the near objects and it is corrected by using a convex lens. The fifth disease which can be discussed is the common disease is the cataract. This is the condition in which the lens becomes opaque either due to aging or some diseases which leads to the blindness of the person. Only cure of the cataract is the removal of the defective lenses by the surgery and using the convex lens in the spectacles. The sixth disease is glaucoma. Overproduction of the vitreous humerus increases pressure on the delicate retina. It 
crushes the delicate cells of the retina causing the blindness and may also be the due to the increased pressure of the this aqueous humor in the anterior chambers because of the blocking of drainage this condition is known as glaucoma and an operation is needed to drain the excess fluid and restore the normal pressure the next disease is the night blindness difficulty to see in dim or diffused light is termed as night blindness which is due to the failure of the formation of the rhodopsin pigment by the rod cells and this pigment it requires vitamin a the next disease is color blindness the inability to distinguish the various colors is termed as color blindness for example failure in distinguishing the red and the green color it is genetic disorder and is more common in the males in the comparison to the females the last disease which can be discussed is squint it has two main conditions first when the two eyes are not properly attached in the eye orbits but converge more leading to the cross eye and the second is when the eye diverges outwards leading to the wide eyes both the conditions may be corrected by the surgical operation and the suitable exercises next sense organ which can be discussed is the sense organ of hearing cum equilibrium which is also termed as phonoreceptor cum statoreceptor a pair of the ears present on the lateral sides of the head one on either side are the organs for perceiving the sound waves and they convey the sound waves to the brain it helps in analyzing the pitch quality intensity and direction of the sound waves and also in maintaining the balance and the body equilibrium the if we talk about the different parts of the ear the ear it contains three main parts first is the external ear second is the middle ear and the third one is the internal ear so let's discuss these three types of the ears one by one the first is the external ear it is the outer part of the ear its function is to collect the sound waves and convey it to the middle ear and it is divided into three main parts first the external penna it is an oval skin covered flap that protects from the side of the head it collects the sound waves and directs these waves into external auditory canal second is the external auditory canal it's oblique s shaped 2.5 cm long tube which extends from the pinna to the tympanic membrane in the beginning of this canal are present hair that acts as a strainers which doesn't allow the dust and the other foreign particles to enter into the ear in the internal linings are present large number of wax glands that secretes the ear wax this ear wax lubricates tympanum for proper functioning and the third part of the external ear is the eardrum or tympanum the rounded flap of diameter of the pencil and is stretched tightly like a drum head between the external and the middle ear the next part of the ear is the middle ear it is an air filled irregular shape called tympanic cavity it is an almost a tight cavity except that it opens into a pharynx through a stratum tube it acts as a ventilator to equalize the pressure of the air on both the sides of the tympanic membrane the inner boundary of the middle ear is formed by a thin bone that bears two aperture covered by a membranes the upper aperture is called oval window or fenestra ovalis and the low aperture is called round window or fenestra rotunda running across the middle ear from tympanum to the oval window is present a mobile chain of three small bones which is termed as ear ossicles they form a leverature system they transmit and amplify the sound waves from the external to the internal ear the next the third part of the ear is the internal ear represented by an irregular 
very delicate structure called membranous labyrinth which is fitted into a bony labyrinth in the temporal bone in between the two there is present a narrow space filled with a dense fluid called perilymph the membranous labyrinth is also filled with a similar fluid called endolymph this membranous labyrinth consists of three main parts the first is the semicircular canal it helps in the dynamic equilibrium or the dynamic balancing of the body next is the vestibule it is the middle bag like or sac like structure and it helps in the static equilibrium and the third part is cochlea it is spirally coiled like a snail shell and having two and a half coils in it as shown in the picture also you can see very well the structure of the ear properly the common causes of the ear loss ear loss so let's discuss some of the common causes of of the hearing which we have faced here the first one is the ear wax building an excessive building of the ear wax can block the ear canal and temporarily present the condition of the sound waves in such cases the doctor or audiologist can safely remove the build up which may help to restore all or most of the hearings the second one is the ear infection in the middle or the inner ear may also cause the temporary hearing loss these infections create a build up of the fluid that may interfere with the movements of the eardrum which in return impact the hearing ability the third is the ruptured eardrum also known as tympanic membrane performation may occur due to the noise exposure or sudden pressure changes or infection the fourth is the excessive noise exposure which is also termed as noise induced hearing loss as nihl which occurs from the exposure to the sounds at dangerous decibel levels it can have temporary or permanent effects occur suddenly or over time the danger zone for the most people starts about 85 db using the hearing protection gadgets and limiting the exposure is essential the fifth is the inner or the middle ear diseases certain conditions in the inner or the middle ear can also cause the hearing loss otosclerosis is a middle ear disease makes it harder for the tiny bones in the middle ear to move and is often treated with the surgery minerous disease occurs in the inner ear and may cause the dizziness and the ringing in the ears the sixth is the physical head trauma a physical injury in the head or brain is another possible cause of the hearing loss depending on the level of damage the audiologist will be able to recommend the proper treatment available there and the seventh which can be discussed is the age related age is a very common factor for the people experiencing the hearing loss it can occur when the structures and the functions of the inner ear slowly begins to decline with age the third type of the sense organ is the organ of the touch which is also termed as tactile organ skin is the largest organ of a body having an area of 1.5 to 2 square meter and it accounts for about 6 to 7% of the total body weight it is related to the sense of the touch which is also named as tactile organ or tactioception the skin contains general receptors which can detect the touch pain pressure and temperature they are present throughout the skin skin receptors generate an impulse and when activated is carried to the spinal cord and then to the brain skin is not just a body covering it is one of the most active organ of the body performing a variety of functions and protecting is day and night from the various external factors 
That is why the skin is also described as the jack of all trades and the master of many tasks. Now let's discuss about the structure of the skin. Skin, it contains three main layers. The first is the epidermis. The outer part of the skin without the blood capillaries and is formed of the several layers of the dead keratinized or cornified cells. It is thickest and very hard on the heel and thick on the soles and the palms. Epidermis is formed of three main layers as cornified layer, granular layer and malfeasian layer. The second part of the skin is the dermis uh, which is the living thick inner vascular layer of the skin formed of the connective tissues. It has the bundles of the unbranched white collagen fibers, severally branched yellow elastic fibers, blood vessels and the nerve fibers. These are formed by a specialized cell called fibroblast lying in the connective tissue. The third layer is the hypodermis. It is also named as sus subcutaneous flat layer and is the deepest layer of the skin. It consists of a network of collagen and flat cells. It helps to converse the body's heat and protect the body from injury by acting as a shock absorbers. Now let's discuss about the fourth sense organ which is sense organ of the smell or termed as olfactory organ. The nose is an olfactory organ. Our olfactory system helps us to perceive the different smells. The sense of organ also aids our sense of the taste. The sense of the smell is also termed as olfaction or olfalocoception. The olfactory cells tend to line the top of the nasal cavity. One end, on the one end, the olfactory cells have a cilia that protects into the nasal cavity. And on the other end of the cells are the olfactory nerve fibers. The olfactory cells are chemoreceptors which contain the chemicals which bind to the cilia and conducts a nerve impulses that is carried to the brain. The brain then translates these impulses into the meaningful smell. During cold, the body produces mucus which blocks the sense of the smell. This is the reason why food which we eat, it tastes blunt. Now let's discuss about the anatomy of the bone. Seeing the anatomy, the first one is about the bone. The heart bridge of the top of the nose is made up of the bone. The second is the cilia, which are the tiny hair-like structures inside the nose, which trap the dirt particles. Then they move those particles towards the nostrils where they can be sneezed out or wiped away. The third is the lateral walls which are made of the cartilage and they are covered in the skin. Fourth is the nasal cavity. The nose has two main nasal cavities and they are hollow spaces where the air follows in and out and they are lined with the mucous membranes. Fifth is the nerve cells. They communicate with the brain to provide a sense of a smell. Sixth, the nostrils are the opening to the nasal cavity. And the last one is the sin sinus. They are the air-filled pockets which are connected to the nasal cavities. They are four in number and they provide the mucus which keeps the nose moist. Now let's discuss about the last type of the sense organ that is organ of the taste which is also termed as gustator receptor. The tongue, it helps in perceiving the various tastes and the flavors. The taste buds are present between the papillae on the tongue, which help in sensing the different taste. The sense of the smell and taste, they tend to work together. If one could not smell something, they couldn't taste it either. The sense of the taste is also termed as gustator receptor or gastioception. The taste buds on the tongue, they contain a chemoreceptor that works similar to the chemoreceptor in the nasal cavity. As shown in the picture also, the human tongue is divided into two main parts. The first, an oral 
part at the front and second is the pharyngeal part at the back. The left and the right sides are also separated along the most of its length by a vertical section of the fibrous tissues that results in a groove on a tongue sucker. There are two groups of muscles of the tongue. The four intrinsic muscles which alters the shape of the tongue and are not attached to the bone and the four pairs extrinsic muscles which change the position of the tongue and are anchored to the bone. Here are a few of the questions which are based on the topic, the material which is discussed with you all. So, test yourself.